For more, I'm joined by our business editor, Cole Stangler, who's been looking at the state of uh, the, ch the economy in uh, Chile. Uh, Cole, what are some of the major economic challenges that these candidates will have to tackle if they win? Yeah, Thomas, so, so by certain measures, uh, Chile's economy is a success story. Uh, it's one of the wealthiest countries in South America. It has the highest GDP uh, per capita in the region. And tellingly, Chile was the first country in South America to join the OECD, the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. It's so about a decade ago. Uh, but there are a lot of issues. Uh, for one, you have the pandemic and all the uncertainty uh, that's around that. Uh, now, Chile also has a very high level of inequality, much higher than in most advanced economies. Uh, for instance, it's, it's Gini coefficient, which is a way of measuring uh, inequalities ahead of the U.S. and the U.K., but just below Brazil. Uh, and finally, Chile's economy is also very closely linked to the copper industry, by far the world's biggest producer, uh, which means that when prices are high, that, that's great, but it also means the country is very vulnerable to, to global demand and to price fluctuations when, when the price drops. And Cole, it's obviously evolved since then, but Chile's free market economy was built by Augusto Pinochet. Yeah, who it should be stressed out, uh, was a dictator. He overthrew uh, Chile's democratically elected socialist government in 1973 with support uh, from the U.S. Over his nearly two decades uh, of rule, Pinochet drew back the role of the state uh, in the Chilean economy, abolishing price controls, cutting spending, suppressing labor unions. Uh, the state privatized uh, a lot, uh, privatizing hundreds of firms, including uh, even the pension system. And that legacy uh, of neoliberalism very much looming over the campaign today. By certain measures, the Chilean economy is strong, but on the flip side, it's built on this high level of inequality where you have a share of the population that's increasingly dissatisfied uh, with the high costs that they have to pay for basic services like education and health care. Cole, this is set to be a very polarizing election. We have one candidate who says that he admires uh, Pinochet's model. The other says that he wants to put it in its grave. Yeah, the difference is that really couldn't be any starker. Uh, the first one you mentioned, uh, Thomas, is, is the far-right lawyer, Jose Antonio Cast. He wants to reduce public spending, lower taxes, cut the number of public ministries. He also wants to keep in place uh, Chile's privatized pensions. Uh, that system was just one of the factors that we saw uh, spark mass protests a couple of years ago. Uh, his opponent is Gabriel Boric, a former left wing uh, student activist. He wants to raise taxes on the wealthy and in corporations. He wants more royalties uh, from the mining sector. That influx uh, of cash, he says, would help go towards funding a welfare state to help cover the cost of education and health care. And Bork, of course, also wants a public model uh, for pensions. So two very different visions uh, for how to run the economy and how to redistribute uh, and how to distribute wealth. Excuse me. It's why the business world uh, is going to be very closely watching uh, these results on Sunday. And to top it off, there really isn't uh, a favorite uh, at this point. You have uh, both Kast and Boric uh, running neck and neck in the polls. Okay, Cole Stangler from our business desk. Thank you very much.